Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all well. I am here today to talk to you about my latest make, which is on the blog, and there's a link to that post down below if you want to check it out and see the pictures and stuff. And it is for the top that I'm wearing. Um, it is a Soul House 7 toaster sweater, the number two version. Um, which has got this little sort of subtle boat neck thing going on here um, and it's using my absolute favourite fabric at the moment which is one of the new Atelier Brunette French Terries. I've got some of my offcuts here because I want to see if I can show you the back of it. So it's like almost a sort of loop back, well it is a loop back, um, and it's nice and soft and fleecy and then on the front can you see these just really sort of subtle spots and it's like a really light gold shimmer so they're sort of metallic it is it is just lovely it's beautiful it's really soft it's pretty stretchy it says it's got a 30 percent stretch so you can see it's pretty stretchy um and it's just really comfortable it's really nice to sew with and it's so cozy to wear and so i'll start i'll stand up and i'll show you what it's like you can see the length so um, my jeans, my uh, cords are probably just sort of, they're not really low, but they're not like high waisted or anything. You can see just as I'm standing, it does sort of sit below it. And it's got a dipped hem, so it's a little bit longer at the back and it's got this nice slit at the side. And there's quite a lot of people um, who chat about online about it being quite short. And if you, you know, if you raise your arms, then it lifts up, which it does. You can see if I lift it up, then you can see my vest top underneath. But it doesn't actually bother me that much. I, I, the looseness makes it perfect because I still have to feed Sophia um, and I have to wear something underneath anyway. So um, that's fine. But if you did want it longer, then it's, it's really easy to lengthen it. But I actually quite like the sort of crop style when it's when it's longer at the back as well. It's so it's got full length sleeves as you can see and the sleeve length on me I think is probably just about right. It might I could probably get away with making it a little bit shorter but I don't think it would be worth it really for me. I think I've got quite normal length arms. I wouldn't say I've usually got a problem with longer short arms. But I always just usually push my I've got such a bad habit of pushing my sleeves up anyway. So it's got a bit of a different facing and this jumper because the facing sort of part of it so it just folds over like that's not actually a separate piece that you sew on and then you sew it in the side seam here the shoulder seam here to hold it in place so that's like a little bit different it's quite it's pretty easy though it's just got a front and a back and two sleeves so it is a, a fairly easy pattern if you were, were weren't you know weren't sure about working with this type of fabric for the first time or whatever it's easy one to, to get through. Instructions are quite good as well. But what I wanted to give you a few extra tips on is using a twin needle. The hem has got a twin needle and I also did it on the sleeve as well. And because it's got the vents, uh, you sort of go around the corner here as well, which is a little bit tricky with the twin needle, but I'm going to show you how. Uh, it's important that you use a stretch because it's a stretch fabric so I've got a stretch twin needle here. We have these in two different distances apart so this one's a 2.5 so the needles are 2.5 millimetres apart. We do also have I think it's a four so it's just a little bit wider and I think it's sort of personal preference. Um, I quite like the narrower one. And then if you're going to use one of these on your machine, then you also need one of these as well, which is a sort of extra bit where you put the second thread. You can have two threads in the top and then your bobbin thread as well. So I'm going to change the camera angle over and show you my machine and I'll show you just setting up basically what I do on my machine. Obviously it's going to be different on different machines, but there, there'll be various similarities. So hopefully that sort of helps and I'll try and sort of show you different things you can do if you're having problems with it as well. The main thing usually is you just need to make sure you've, you've threaded it up right. Um, we can alter the bobbin tension a little bit but I'll show you that more when I show you the front of my machine. So at the moment I've got my machine just threaded up with a normal thread. On, on brother machines on this one and I think it's pretty much on most brother machines when you turn the machine on the needle will default to the left hand position of the foot so we're going to have to change that over as well but it might be that your machine doesn't doesn't do that so what we're going to do is put our little attachment thing onto where you usually wind the bobbin so I just stick that on there and then it turns to the side and 
so that I don't need to have two reels of cotton. I've actually just got some bobbin thread and a matching colour and that's what I'm going to put on this spare pin here. And I don't usually jam it up so much that it can't move. I sort of pull it back a little bit like that just so that it can run off nice and easily. And then what I'm going to do is just thread it in exactly the same way that I put my other thread through. So just follow the normal way you would thread the machine. Just make sure it catches on all the little bits. It's important your needle's at the highest position when you do this so that it catches in this loop up here properly. And then in my machine, I've got a little sort of hook just at the top of the needle. So you need to make sure it clicks into there as well. And then I'm just going to take the needle that's in there at the moment. I'm going to take that out. So there's a little bit that you turn here to loosen it. So you just pull that, that needle out, keep that to the side just now. And then I'll get my stretch needle and then just insert that into the machine and tighten it back up again. And then I'm going to put my, is this one, where's this one coming from? So this one's coming from the this thread here is coming from this one, so I'm going to put that in the left hand side here. So my machine does have a needle threader, but I can't use it with the twin needle. You have to just thread it manually, which is always a little bit more fiddly when you're not used to it. Thankfully my eyesight isn't too bad yet. <laughs> and then I'll just thread the other one as well. I usually find cutting it with a pair of scissors just makes the, the thread less hairy at the end and then it's easier to thread. So I'm just put that through the left hand needle, make sure it doesn't get caught up on anything and then pass it through and then I just need to move my needle over to the centre. So on this machine it's number four, like that. so you press that and then you are ready to go. So I've got a little bit of my fabric here and it's important you always test it and that you test it on the same number of layers that you'd be sewing through. So on my hem, I had folded it up like that and pressed it and then I'm just going to sew on the edge that's so going through two layers of fabric. So that's where I'm going to test my, my double needle. So if I just put it in and then get my... Sorry, the foot pedal is miles away. Um, and then just put my foot on the foot pedal and then we're going to have a little look and see what it does. Just so like that. And then let's have a little look. So I think that's looking not too bad. I've got no skip stitches. And then on the back you can see I've got a, a turquoise thread as my bobbin thread so you can see that it sort of zigzags back and forth a little bit and that it's that zigzag that allows the hem to stretch so you can see when I pull it the threads aren't going to snap they're going to sort of stretch now you can see see if I can get it close enough and still in focus you can see some of the thread from the front coming through to the back so it means that the tension on the bottom is higher than it is on the top. So if you, to balance that, you would just need to increase the tension on the top. So on this machine, this is my tension dial here, but quite often it's a dial here. It's not some more basic machines. So you, I would just increase it here so I could go to like 4.6 or 4.8, cause you just try it a little bit. So if I do that again, and we'll see if it makes, any difference so here mm, I'm not sure it's made a significant difference to be honest and um, the one in the left hand side is my second one let's whack up a decent bit more just so that you can see a bit more of an extreme and we'll do another one Yeah, you can definitely see it's more zigzaggy now. So it's just going to sort of vary depending on your machine and also depending on your fabric as well. Because this fabric is quite a bit thicker than say like a lightweight jersey. It's just got more stability. So it's, I find it's usually easier to twin needle in fabrics that do have more stability. But if you find that you're getting 
quite a tunneled effect, which is actually happening probably a bit more on this one, where it looks more zigzaggy on the bottom there. You can see it's sort of like tunneled a little bit more. Sometimes that goes away with pressing. But the other thing you can do, instead of increasing the tension on the top threads, um, where I increased it here, you could just have that as normal, which I think is four, so sort of default. And then you can increase the, the sorry, you decrease the bobbin tension, which is a little bit more tricky to do. And you might have to sort of take this apart. So I've now turned the machine off and I've just unscrewed the little screws that take the plate of my machine off. So if you take them out, and then you can pull your bobbin casing out. And then can you see this little screw just there? So that's where you can alter the tension of the bobbin case. Admittedly, I've actually never done this before and I've always managed to work out a way that I can, that I can do a twin needle successfully with just messing about with other stuff. But some places recommend that, that that's what you can try. So just so you know where it is, you might want to give it a go. Just remember to change it back again before you do any normal sewing. The other thing that might help is if you're using a really thin jersey and you're getting a lot of tunneling, which is that sort of look there where it's almost like pinching it together a little bit and raising the fabric, is you might want to just, just stabilise it so you could have... Um, some dissolvable stabiliser in there as well which will just give the fabric more body but as I said I've never actually found I've needed to do that either it might just be that maybe because I've got a quite a good machine that doesn't really give me too much problems I'm not sure whether maybe if the machine's a bit more basic you might struggle but um, they're all sort of things that you can try anyway the other thing that I wanted to show you with the twin needle is turning a corner because on the vent at the side on my sweater you have to you have to turn the corner basically when you hem. So I'm going to show you how to do that because you have to do it a little bit differently from how you'd normally turn a corner. So um, just as an example, say I was coming down here and then I'm going to turn the corner to go along this way. So once I get to the point where I want to turn my corner I can't leave the needle in the fabric because if I did, it's just going to sort of create a little bubble because there's two needles there. So you have to just keep it, keep it as it is, lift the needle up. So you either use the hand wheeler on my machine, you can lift that, um, lift the needle with that little button there. So now the, the needles are out and I'm going to turn, but I have to be really careful not to stretch the threads so that I, because otherwise I would end up with a loop on the outside which could get caught so you have to lift the foot up but I'm not lifting it all the way up so I'm just lifting it a little bit and gently turning the fabric round like that a little bit at a time and then once I get all the way round I'm going to try and make sure that I line up where the where the right hand needle here last came out of the fabric I'm going to make it go in, in exactly the same place and then you just continue to sew like that all the way along and then finish off and then what you end up getting is let's see if I can show you close up enough and it's still being focused so here it's like a straight pivot but on the corner it's almost like a little bit of a diagonal stitch which I think looks fine it's just little bit different and really it's going to be hard to get a total turn in the corner because you can't really have an extra stitch in one needle and not in the other but it's 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 honestly not too bad it's just as easy as that really you just have to have the needle out of the fabric and then just really slowly turn it round and don't lift your presser foot up the whole way just lift it up part of the way 
So I hope you find those tips useful. I'm going to sign off for today, but I shall be back soon. Thank you for all of your positive comments about my last video, which was about all the new fabrics we had in. It was really good fun making it and you've, uh, you've asked for more, so I shall aim to do more. We've got a busy few weeks coming up because we are going to be going to the knitting and stitching show, which is in London, and that is from the 2nd to the 5th of March. So we're going to be getting ready and preparing for that but I shall still aim to tune in with you at some point every week with um, what I've been making or what's coming up or, or whatever. So I shall see you next time. Bye. Hi, okay, I'm back again. I've got a little bit of a bonus for this video. Come on, baby. sophie has got a matching jumper, although she's got very cool ruffles on her shoulders, which are really fun. Hello, baby. <laughs> oh, oh. Can you see yourself? This is a brindle and twig sweater. It's the flutter sleeve. You know, it's really cute. And I just use my offcuts. Oh. Nice. <laughs> okay, say bye, Sophia. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh.